Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, May 16, 2023. Two states of public emergency SOEs have been declared for Clarendon as well as geographical areas in Hanover and St. James. The declaration took effect at 12.01 this morning and will remain in place for the next 14 days. In a press release earlier today, Prime Minister Andrew Holness has said the SOEs are in response to a surge in criminal activities within these areas. As he reaffirmed the state's commitment to safeguarding the lives of innocent citizens, Mr. Holness urged the Jamaicans to share information with the security forces to cauterize crime. In justifying the declaration of SOEs, Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson revealed that the Clarendon Police Division has seen a 67% increase in murders and a 41% increase in shooting incidents as at May 14, 2023, when compared to the same period last year. Hanover, meanwhile, experienced the highest increase in murders with a 75% rise as at May 2023. And though St. James has witnessed a decline in murders by 27%, the parish still had the highest number of murders and the fourth highest number of shooting incidents across all police divisions. There's a renewed call for urgent international intervention in what's being described as a social, political and security crisis in Haiti. Prime Minister Andrew Holness and United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres made the appeal during a joint press conference at Jamaica House on Monday. In recent times, Haiti has been in the throes of upheaval, with no universally recognized leader and uptick in violent gangs, as well as severe food and resource shortages. At Monday's media briefing, Mr. Holness bemoaned the sparse action being taken to address the very urgent humanitarian and security situation in Haiti. He urged the global community to partner with CARICOM, which has been expending resources and leading missions to the island. With greater effort, we can see a breakthrough towards a better and broader consensus towards a solution in Haiti. The inescapable fact, however, is that Haiti needs security support. The UN Secretary General echoed Mr. Holness's sentiments, revealing that he had sent a proposal to the UN Security Council to support Haiti's security forces in equipment and training. Mr. Guterres, however, conceded that it had been a difficult exercise to mobilize the global community in assisting Haiti. I want to once again ask the international community to understand that an effective solidarity with Haiti is not only a matter of generosity, is essentially a matter of enlightened self-interest. Because the present situation of Haiti reflects a threat, a threat to the security of the whole region and further afield. Also coming out of Monday's press briefing, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres is calling for a reform in the international financial architecture. This restructuring, he says, will update the outdated, dysfunctional and unfair system and adapt it to the realities of today's global economy. According to Mr. Guterres, the world's economic system is facing a moral, power and practical problem. He reasons that this serious problem can be viewed in the recent uneven distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. The UN Secretary General also points to what he terms as the unfair treatment meted out to small island developing states like Jamaica, which cannot access debt relief or concessional funds due to their classification as middle-income countries. Which again is a deep injustice because small island development states in particular have a high level of vulnerability because of the structure of their economies, because of their geographic location, their size, and because of their uh, enormous, uh, 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 the enormous impact they suffer in relation to climate change. So there is a serious moral problem with the international financial system. And there is a power problem. The joint press briefing formed part of a two-day visit by the UN Secretary General. During his visit, Mr. Guterres held bilateral talks with Prime Minister Holness, addressed UN Jamaica staff, and visited several locations around the island. Minister of Science, Energy and Technology Daryl Vaz wants the country to immediately create a national roadmap to identify actions needed to accelerate the development of a peaceful nuclear energy program. According to Minister Vaz, it is vital for Jamaica to realize the benefits of nuclear energy and pursue this as a national priority. The minister insists that if Jamaica does not join the rest of the world in pursuit of building its own peaceful nuclear energy capabilities, the country will be left behind. It is important for us to recognize the broader benefits of incorporating a cost-competitive energy source, such as nuclear energy, as our dominant, our dominant source of energy. 
the opportunities that it can present in terms of creation of new industries, employment and economic growth, and the overall well-being of Jamaicans can be enormous. Minister Vaz was making his sectoral debate presentation in the House of Representatives recently. He says reducing the cost of energy in Jamaica will lead to the introduction of new industries supporting employment and economic growth. Approximately 1,500 corporate area residents are now benefiting from the safe and secure community Wi-Fi established by the Universal Service Fund, USF. Prime Minister Andrew Holness officially commissioned the free Wi-Fi service for residents of the Tower Avenue, Coburn Penn and Penwood communities recently. The government is interested in ensuring that every Jamaican can get access to the information highway. Because information that you convert to knowledge that gives you wisdom is power. Prime Minister Andrew Holness officially commissioned the free Wi-Fi service for residents of the Tower Avenue, Coburn Penn and Penwood communities recently. He stressed that government was spending millions of dollars to boost public access to Wi-Fi in urban and high-trafficked areas, as well as communities, as this was critical for Jamaica's development. As the society moves towards becoming more online, we have to get all Jamaicans online. In the coming weeks I will be, and days, I will be making certain announcements regarding the acceleration of Jamaica's intention to become a fully digital society. And finally, the St. James Chapter of the Lay Magistrates Association of Jamaica, LMAJ, is putting on a marching band festival in the hopes that it will help transform the lives of at-risk youth in and around the parish. The event, which started out as a competition between different bands in 2018, was on hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In an effort to re-engage and reignite the bands in a way that will benefit the communities, the event coordinators decided a festival to familiarize people with the event was best. The goal is for this endeavor to help stem the scourge of crime and violence among young people as it gives them an avenue to do something positive with their lives. So what will happen and what, what happens is that when a young man have an issue with another one, that issue is settled before they can even begin to rehearse, before they can even begin to practice. So the band leaders have a tremendous role to play in terms of bringing these young people together and causing them to get along with one another. The marching band festival will be held at the Catherine Hall Sports Complex on Labor Day, May 23. It begins at noon with activities for the kids until 4 p.m. when the marching band display will commence. There will be a special prize of $50,000 for the best dressed band and each band will be going home with $100,000 courtesy of the Lay Magistrates Association. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.